Hey folks, Adam Savage here in my cave answering questions about my tenure on Mythbusters. Uh, these questions have been submitted in advance by tested patrons. Um, and this is a really, this is a nifty question. Uh, C. Morgan says that they use the results from the roundabouts are more efficient than four-way stops experiment in a cybersecurity class they teach at university as an analogy to demonstrate how it is beneficial for internet users to make an informed choice about risks through a program of security awareness rather than blocking their access indiscriminately. What a lovely analogy to make from the Traffic Tricks episode to that. Uh, C. Morgan wants to know, what other uses of the results from Mythbusters experiments have you been made aware of? Um, by teachers, I mostly hear about, I, <laughs> number one, I think that for, for a while now we've been, uh, we've been one of the default science classes for the homeschooling crowd. Which means I'm a, I, I would I, I don't know if there's been an uptick in that during COVID. Um, I haven't gotten a lot of emails or I haven't been tracking that, so I don't know. So I know a lot of parents use MythBusters who are homeschooling to show their kids about science. I know a lot of science teachers use MythBusters as a reward. Um, but one of my favorite things I've heard is uh, science educators using MythBusters as a way of demonstrating to people how messy and creative science is. Um, that is something I really deeply appreciate because it wasn't something I understood before we started making the show. It was something that I came to grasp as we made the show. Um, I already understood the scientific method was a creative process. Robert Piercing, uh, in Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance goes to some lengths to explain that the scientific method is a deeply creative process. Um, Form a hypothesis is a creative act. Out of what? From what? Well, your experience and your knowledge, but still it's coming from in here. It's generated by, by you and your experience. But he noticed something about forming hypotheses, which is the more you form, the more you can form. They seem to be self-generating, which is a definition of a, of a creative act. Like the more you come up with, the more you can come up with. Um, so I really appreciated that because, <clears throat> look, Mythbusters was, a, we loved the controversy when it happened for airplane on a conveyor belt or something like that. That controversy was bread and butter to us. It's totally great. We're, we didn't have a horse in the race. We don't care what the answer is. We just wanted to build a, a suitable methodology for testing and coming to an answer. Um, but as to what that answer is, we, we give two craps. There's no, we're agnostic and, and with every test as to what the final result would be. Um, and building a good methodology is hard and exciting. And when you do it, it's thrilling. It's really thrilling. Um, but that controversy meant that a lot of people were constantly complaining, you know, calling us idiots. Go, I mean, I, I, per standard practice of a YouTuber, I don't read my comments for the most part. Uh, but in those early Mythbuster days, the comment boards were just packed with people being like, these two idiots don't know what they're doing. And there are particular people who got upset at the way we performed science, a particular group of people. Um, and if I had, oh, excuse me, just a moment. Right. As I was saying, there's a particular class of people that took the most umbrage at Mythbuster's way of performing science. And that group of people I would classify as grad students. <laughs> I'm only being sort of facetious. Gra I think grad students get upset about our methodology because they still believe that there's some perfect answer out there. But the people that would jump to our defense would always be the working scientists of the world who would explain, yeah, no, sure, their iterations are small. Sure, they're working under ridiculous constrictions sometimes. But they, Mythbusters... I'm so proud of this thing that we did, which was that we showed that the scientific method is messy and confusing and creative and beautiful. None of these words show up in a fourth grade science class or in 
none of those words showed up in my fourth grade science classes. But the more we help people understand those things about scientific discovery, the more we help them understand that science isn't some monolith of facts out there that some people know and most people don't. That's a really damaging cultural way to think about discovery and knowledge. It's not something that other people know. It's something that you could know. It's something that you could grasp. And the more we understand that, the better stewards of our culture and our world and our neighbors we can be. So, it is that. It's that. It's, this, it's, the, it's the educators who have explained to me that they've used Mythbusters to show the messiness and creativeness of science, creativity of science. That is the other use I've heard of for Mythbusters, and it's one I'm incredibly proud of. Thank you so much, uh, C. Morgan, for that awesome question. Tested patrons, keep submitting your questions, and I will continue to answer them. Some of the answers will be long. Some of them will be short. They'll all come from me. <laughs> Stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.